Well, if we want to talk about protection and access, then we have to talk about archives because um, uh, that is the future of the archaeological information that we uh, spend our time recovering. So the future of archaeological archive practices should be an important part of any future discussions around the Valletta Convention or about anything else that we do. So I'm going to look at some initiatives that are current, some initiatives that have just happened, some of the pressures on archive practice in England as a case study, if you like, for how things are developing elsewhere, and um, take a, a broader look beyond Europe at some of the initiatives that we're um, dealing with currently in, a, in the context of museum practice. So. Uh, not just archaeological practice, but how archives and archaeological archives fit into museums and museum ethics uh, as well. So we'll start here. How many of you have seen the Arches Standard for Archaeological Archives, for best practice in archaeological archives? A few, not enough. There's the web address. <laughs> Go and track it down. Um, should we, it's, uh, it's available in several different languages, as you can see from this site. Um, and its aim, uh, in the spirit of the Valletta Convention, is to make archaeological data, information and knowledge available, stable, consistent and accessible for present and future generations. Our aim in producing this in as many languages as we possibly can um, is, to, is to make archive practice consistent and thereby make access to archaeological information uh, relatively easy wherever you happen to be in Europe. So this is the first of a set of EAC guidelines and we're very proud to have been the first. Um, it's available in several different languages as I've said uh, and um, just to reiterate the point, if any of you speak Icelandic, that's just what I started off with. Our aim is to preserve, protect and make stable archaeological <coughs> information. Uh, its coverage is extending beyond Europe. Um, we're very pleased to, so since 11th of May when it launched, over 6,000 unique visitors to the website. Uh, so make sure you're uh, in, the, in, the, in the next thousand worth. Um, at the same time, uh, there is a crisis in, uh, in museum uh, practice, across certainly across the UK and uh, from my experience in Europe as well. Um, this is uh, ICROM, um, the website which broke the news. It's not really news to most of us that objects in museum storage are in peril mainly because for two reasons, as we'll see. Um, lack of space was given as the most common reason for, um, for from two in three museums for uh, finding it difficult to continue to collect. The problem um, for, for many museums is not just archaeological, but archaeological archives are uncontrollable. They're very... They, they just grow, and museums have very little input into the rate of the generation of archaeological material from projects. They just have to accept whatever it is uh, largely uh, is deposited with them. They don't have any say in whether an archaeological project should, should go ahead or not, certainly not in the UK. Um, in England, Historic England funded a project with the Society for Museum Archaeology to survey the state of collecting in, uh, in England and to, um, to work out over three years. So this is the first survey in three sequential years to see how the picture changes. At the moment, as you can see, 35 museums are no longer collecting archaeological archives, which means uh, wherever uh, archaeological excavations or projects are happening in those areas, there is no museum to deposit the material. The material is therefore under threat because it just resides in stores run by the, contract, the archaeological contractors. 
So the conclusion there, 100 by 2027, 20, 112 museums out of 154 will be full and may have stopped collecting. And that's an untenable situation. It's verging on a crisis for us and it's not unique. Uh, one proposed solution is to be more selective about what is retained in an archaeological archive to, um, to ensure that what is deposited with a museum is what should stay in a museum and be curated in the long term. The Arches Standard um, has a section which uh, um, sets out how to approach selection from, a muse from a, an archive point of view to ensure that a selection strategy is part of project planning and to, um, and to manage selection during the data gathering phase of a project. Um, that's easier said than done. Meanwhile, ICOM, uh, I don't know how much you know about ICOM, but uh, one of their mission statements is there. Um, and it's admirable that, as I say, museums are increasingly under-resourced, certainly in the UK and I'm sure elsewhere. Um, ICOM have produced a code of ethics and the document called Key Som Concepts of Museology. How many of you f are familiar with those? Yeah, I guess. Um, worth a look, uh, especially for this. If we start talking about selecting archaeological archives, protecting the, our heritage, these are the sorts of principles that we should be uh, upholding mm. when we're talking about transferring archives into museum care. Uh, the Key Concepts of Museology is a fascinating document, probably the best way of putting it. Um, it, has, it, it basically has it's sort of a, a dictionary of museological terms, uh, and the one that includes that covers collection um, is again a very important tool, I think, in our discussions around selection and the generation of archaeological material which will be curated in the long term. Um, and if we uphold the code of ethics and we adopt this terminology, we will be in safer ground, I think. We'll have a, a secure base from which to progress our discussions because we will be part of a wider community. And these discussions have to take place in the broadest possible community because we all will be suffering the same problems. Um, so the key con concepts of museology include, and 15 minutes, I don't have time to go into these in detail, but I do recommend that you investigate them. Um, heritage is a public good. Uh, museum institution is created and maintained by society. That implies that there's a social responsibility to the curation of archaeological material that we should all uphold. Um, they are also promoting standards and guidelines, CDOC, the, um, their, their conceptual reference model and um, the Council for Museum Documentation um, is currently engaged in a project <coughs> under the title Archaeological Sites um, which has this aim to facilitate communication very similar to the ARCHES standard how am I doing for time? Okay. Good. Um, uh, to assist countries in an early stage in developing record systems. So currently a working group for CDOC, uh, which is part of ICOM, are um, using, well, referencing the um, International Core Data Standard. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but that's even less <laughs> key. Very, very, uh, a thorny document, I'd say, <laughs> but good fun. Um, this is attempting, with key concepts of museology, to establish a common language, common terms of reference for museum practice um, and, um, and uh, methodology and, and terminology, just as importantly. And so we are working now on a basic standard for the deep disposition of archaeological archives, uh, having identified the problem that in many countries in the third world, uh, beyond Europe, archive practice is even worse um, than it is in some parts of the UK. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so the result, as it says there, is that objects lose their intellectual value. We're back to the concept of the key concept of a museum and a museum collection, uh, and they propose a solution of an international standard. So the CDOT group is now working on that standard. Um, 
referencing the arches, guard, the, the arches standard, the EAC standard here, um, and uh, and framing it within the uh, cultural, the conceptual reference model, uh, which is interesting and fun at the same time. Um, the aim, of course, is to ensure that uh, we produce something consistent and things like this tool here, the archiving checklist chart, is essential when you're preparing material to be transferred into museums. Uh, the CDOT Working Party has moved the, um, the debate further from the Arches Guide. As I say, it does reference the conceptual reference model and the, the sort of adopted terminology. So we have to, we're sort of a, slightly above the level of the Arches <coughs> standard with these sorts of terminologies, distinguishing different types of textual material uh, in the documentary archive um, to make the whole thing consistent. So the terminology is interesting um, and very much embedded in the CDOC mission, I think. Um, and uh, divides the material archive uh, similarly into four different uh, components, which uh, again uh, ensures compatibility, I think. That's the aim across uh, anyone who adopts the standard. It also um, is the definition, perhaps a bit late <laughs> today, but a definition of, uh, of, an, of what an archaeological archive is from the Arches standard. And um, CDOC, the CDOT working group uh, have uh, refined that into these two elements. Um, the working project archive, which is everything that is generated during the course of a project, and then the preserved archive, which is everything that it, we've identified to be preserved uh, in the long term for curation beyond the duration of a project. I think that's a useful distinction. Archive, if archive practice is guided towards that aim of producing the preserved archive, which can be everything that is in the working project mm -hmm. archive, there's no compulsion to select, but um, it means that we are certain within the framework of CDOC and ICOM and everything else that what we deposit for future curation is exactly what needs to be preserved. Uh, and again, this is a communal activity which we should be, um, uh, which we should be sharing the responsibility for. Finally, um, I'll just, this, is, this is what should be in a preserved archive. This is the idea of a perfect archive. But I show this slide because um, this is a slide uh, of the museum store in Barcelona. Um, the statue shown here was erected to celebrate Franco's victory after the Civil War and is therefore very topical now, therefore a point of great contention um, and had and obviously subsequently removed at the end of the Franco era. Um, it can never be displayed really, it can never go back to where it was in, in the town square and it certainly uh, would focus a lot of uh, negativity. But it, by the same token, it's not being destroyed. It has been collected as evidence of a past that maybe people want to forget, but it still has um, some meaning in terms of our understanding of, of our past and our shared heritage. If we're talking about archaeological archives, we're a long way removed from this sort of contentious mode of collection. <coughs> so some perspective in this sense is not a bad thing. Thank you very much. Thank you.